Hello, my name is CZ and today I'll be walking you through the Cellular Respiration Lab. A general overview. The purpose of our lab is to measure the oxygen consumption of germinated and non-germinated or dormant pea plant seeds. What is cellular respiration? Cellular respiration is when an organism breaks down glucose with the help of oxygen to form ATP. ATP is a usable energy for growth and also cellular processes within the plant. And here is the equation for cellular respiration where one molecule of glucose reacts with six molecules of O2 to form six molecules of CO2, six molecules of H2O or water, and ATP. So to answer our question, our first question, what is the role of KOH? Well, first let's go over how this experiment works. By monitoring the pressure change at the test tube over time, we will be able to see how much O2 the seeds will consume. And as mentioned previously, this is the equation for cellular respiration. And from this uh, equation, we can see that there's a 6 to 6 molar ratio of O2 to CO2, which means that n moles of O2 will produce equal amounts of CO2. So in theory, the pressure should not change. But when we add KOH to this reaction, we get 2KOH plus CO2 turns into K2CO3, as the added K uh, KOH will react with this produced CO2, which is a gas. And this KOH reacting with this produced CO2 from the plants will give us K2CO3, which is a precipitate. And precipitates are a solid. And because um, it is turned into this K2CO3 solid, it won't contribute to the pressure difference. And as a result, the pressure change, um, the change in pressure inside the test tube will be solely due to how much O2 is consumed. The second question is, how did we keep the volume constant? Well, first we measured out the water displacement of the germinated peas. And we use this as a benchmark, and when measuring the water displacement of the non-germinated seeds, we use glass beads to fill in and account for the difference. And for the glass beads, we just use enough glass beads to um, gain to have the same water displacement. And here is a model of our test tubes, where this is uh, germinated, non-germinated with the glass beads, and here is the glass beads. So continued from the second question is, why is it important to keep volume constant? Well, from our ideal gas equation, which is PV equals nRT, where P is pressure, V is volume, N is moles of gas, R is the gas constant, and T is temperatures in kelvins, uh, we can isolate the pressure by dividing both sides by the volume, which, is, which gives us P equals to nRT over V. And in our case, the moles, gas constant, and temperature are all kept constant. And as a result, this gives us the equation of P equals to 1 over V, which thus shows us an inverse relationship between pressure and volume. What this means is, as pressure goes up, the volume must go down in order to keep the equation true, and the opposite is true as well. Therefore, it is important to keep volume constant so that we can compare our pressure readings on the same scale. A bigger volume would mean a lower pressure reading as collisions between molecules are less likely to occur. As a result, you cannot compare this reading to a pressure reading of peas in a test tube with smaller volume. This third question, why did we use three different types of beads? So the glass beads will provide us, provide us with a control group for our experiment as they are unable to respirate. Germinated seeds provide us with a clear change in pressure data, uh, with, provide us with clear change in pressure data as it should in theory require the most oxygen. And non-germinated seeds just provides us with data so we can compare it to our uh, pressure change of germinated seeds. So our lab setup. The materials needed for this lab is six test tubes, two beakers filled with water at 10 degrees Celsius and 23 degrees Celsius, absorbent and non-absorbent cotton, KOH, germinated, non-germinated peas, seeds, and glass beads, and also the pressure sensor. Uh, so our procedure. So we first rip the absorbent cotton and push it with tweezers to, the tweezers to the bottom of all test tubes, and we drop KOH onto the cotton, but avoid uh, contact with the edge. And then we place another layer of non-absorbent cotton on top of the uh, absorbed KOH cotton at the bottom, and this is in order to prevent uh, KOH contamination. And then we place the measured out germinated seeds, non-germinated seeds, and glass beads, and uh, these each took up two test tubes, so six in total. And then we plugged in the, pre uh, the stopper with pressure sensor connected and submerged uh, three of each um, into the water bath, so the 10 degree water bath and the 23 degree water bath. And then we submerged this for uh, 20 minutes while collecting data. And so here are our hypotheses. So our independent variables are the types of seeds, so uh, germinated, non-germinated glass beads, and also the temperature of the water bath. And our dependent variable is the amount of O2 consumed. So the first hypothesis is temperature, and the alternate hypothesis is listed here, and the null hypothesis is also listed here. So 
um, the seeds submerged in the 23 degree water will consume more oxygen than the seeds submerged in the 10 degree water. And the null hypothesis is the seeds submerged in the 23 degree water will not consume more oxygen than the seeds submerged in the 10 degree water. And the second hypothesis is the seed type. So the alternate hypothesis is the germinated seeds will consume more oxygen than the non-germinated seeds. And the null hypothesis is the germinated seeds will not consume more oxygen than the non-germinated seeds. So here is our data collection, and this is our figure one, which depicts the pressure changes of the different beads in 23 degree water and 10 degree water. And a note to point out here is, um, in beads alone, we can see that the difference, the change in pressure is 1.2 and 1.3. And in theory, this should be wrong, because glass beads cannot respirate. And this can be due to human error, such as uh, the stopper wasn't plugged in properly, so that means that uh, additional air leaked in, or uh, the temperature wasn't kept constant, which means that uh, the existing air molecules inside may have reacted. And so when we um, correct the pressure difference, we can just simply subtract this uh, existing difference into um, the uh, existing pressure difference, which gives us the correct difference. And we can do it for the bottom as well. And the figure two is the graph depicting the corrected change in O2 pressure in kPa over the course of 20 minutes. So we can see the different lines uh, showing germinated and non-germinated and also at the different temperatures. And then so the answer is to a hypothesis, the so number one. Um, so for the first hypothesis, the alternate hypothesis is correct. And this is correct because from figure two, we can see that the lines with the circular data points, which depicts the corrected change in pressure, therefore O2, have a greater negative slope compared to the lines with the triangular data points. This shows that there is an overall greater decrease in O2 levels within the test tubes when they are submerged in 25 degree Celsius water, as that would be the result of more O2 being consumed. And this makes sense because at higher temperatures, gas molecules are moving at a faster rate. This allows for more collisions and therefore reactions to occur. And as a result, the cellular respiration process would move at a faster rate and thus consume more oxygen in a shorter amount of time. And for our second uh, hypothesis, uh, the alternate hypothesis is correct once again. And from figure two, we can also see that overall, the red lines depict uh, the red lines which depict germinated seeds have a greater change in slope and therefore pressure over time to the purple lines which depict non-germinated seeds. This means that overall the germinated seeds consume more oxygen as there is less remaining in the test tubes. This makes sense because germinated seeds are considered alive while non-germinated seeds are usually dried and considered dead. As germinated seeds are alive, they require energy to maintain cellular processes and to encourage growth. As a result, they will gain this energy from cellular respiration as stated above. This means that they will have to utilize glucose and also the O2 that we are measuring in order to provide energy for itself so that it can grow out roots and leaves in the long run. Thank you.